So if you think about it, programming is a little bit like magic because you use incantations to make stuff happen. So maybe that's the reason why they decided to put a wizard onto this famous computer science textbook. And maybe that's why it got the nickname of the wizard book. And yeah, of course, I'm talking about structure and interpretation of computer programs. So very famous and very well liked introduction to computer science and I recently finished reading it so I thought I would share some of my thoughts. Yeah it has been used for the introductory course in computer science at MIT for a while. Yeah it's a fairly old book. I I read the edition from 1996. There's a newer edition in 2022 that is using JavaScript but I wouldn't recommend that because they like literally just transliterated all of the scheme code into very unidiomatic JavaScript. So if you want to read it, I would recommend reading the scheme version. And I mean, even though it's an old book, it's not really outdated or anything. I mean, the, the examples are timeless. My, my background for reading this was just I wanted to read it because it's a famous book. So didn't really expect to get that much new information out of it because I have a degree in computer science and I've also read this other famous Lisp book, if you can even call it a book, the Lisp 1.5 Programmer's Manual, which is also very famous and even older. Yeah, so first of all, if you want to read this book, it's available for free on the website. So if you just Google structure and interpretation of computer programs, you can find well the full text in HTML. It's licensed under a Creative Commons license. So if you search it online, you will also find that there's a very nicely typeset PDF version that looks much better than the HTML site. So I would recommend you get that one. Okay, so I'm just going to summarize chapters quickly. Okay, so first of all, well, there are some famous quotes that are from this book, like Pascal is for building pyramids, Lisp is for building organisms, or uh, another one that you might have heard is, it is better to have 100 functions operate on one data structure than to have 10 functions operate on 10 data structures. Or the third one, maybe the most famous quote is, programs must be written for people to read and only incidentally for machines to execute. Okay, so I'm gonna try to summarize um, the chapters a bit. So first chapter is building abstractions with procedures. And yeah, this chapter really just teaches you basic programming techniques like recursion and also teaches you a mental model for how Lisp programs are um, evaluated. Yeah, one thing that this book does is contains a lot of like nice little side notes or examples in the text that I actually often found more interesting than the main text, like stuff like uh, teaching you about Fermat's little theorem or about how you can accelerate fixed point searches using average damping. Okay, chapter two, building abstractions with data. This chapter teaches you, well, about abstraction barriers, how you can represent data in Lisp, yeah, polymorphism, basically how you could build a sort of a software library in Lisp. And one of the interesting examples was yeah, Huffman encoding trees, which is an interesting technique that, that you usually learn about in computer science for creating an optimal encoding. Chapter three is called Modularity, Objects and State, where it introduces you how you can work with mutable state in, inside of Scheme. So Scheme is I mean, it's called a functional programming language, but it's not really functional in the sense that it's pure, like for example, Haskell. You can just do mutable state in Scheme. But it also, this chapter then not only teaches you how to use a mutable state, but also how it's represented inside of the interpreter, which is the environment model of evaluation. Yeah, there's also a section about concurrency. So basically like multi-threading and streams, which is well, basically just the iterator pattern or like lazy lists if you think about it in like the functional sense. Okay, the, the next chapter, Metalinguistic Abstraction, teaches you how to write essentially an interpreter for scheme in scheme, which is why it's called a metacircular evaluator. Yeah, and that this is very elegant. I mean, it's very well, Lisp is very well known for the fact that you can just using a few lines of code write an interpreter for Lisp in Lisp. In, in this book, they actually take it a few steps further. So first they define this meta-circular evaluator that, that works 
with normal scheme programs and then they sort of create several variations on it. So they make one version that uses lazy evaluation, like in Haskell. They make one version that does non-deterministic computing, which is very interesting. I don't know if there's any like mainstream languages that follow this this sort of pattern. So in non-deterministic computing you just get these sort of functions that can just make a decision sort of with foresight so for example here we're choosing elements of a list and then we require that their sum is prime and the non-deterministic approach will just make this magically work i mean in practice it's probably not very useful because it's very easy to make the, the runtime blow up but um, one area where this kind of thing comes up is for example in, in property testing so for example in, in rust there's this library called prop test where you can do something like that, like, I mean, this is maybe not such a great example, but here they're just choosing a random, like, year, month, and day, and then parsing a date. And it's, I cannot find a very good example in, in this documentation, but in property testing, basically, you can also reject a value, and then it will sort of backtrack and generate you a new one, just like um, this approach that they're showing here. In this so i guess maybe this is sort of sort of a similar thing where this sort of stuff appears in real life yeah they also introduce you to one variation of the interpreter that does logic programming so like prolog i guess also very cool to see so overall chapter four was definitely my favorite chapter in chapter five computing with register machines this chapter gives you basically a model of how a scheme is evaluated on a real computer or how a computer even works. So basically a register machine is a theoretical model of computation that's a bit closer to how an actual CPU works than, for example, stuff like the Lambda Calculus or a Turing machine. I found their notation here pretty confusing though. So in general, I would have just preferred if they had just used like a realistic model of a CPU and some sort of made up assembly language and then introduced to that instead of this more theoretical register machine stuff. But yeah, basically what they walk you through in this chapter is how you can simulate these register machines in Scheme and then they build sort of a compiler that compiles Scheme to well, code that can run on your simulated register machine. Yeah, but if you want to learn how like a computer works, like fundamentally, there's actually a book that I would recommend rather than that. Chapter 5, it's just uh, called The Elements of Computing Systems, also known as NAND to Tetris, because well, it's a very hands-on book. You start out with NAND gates and you build up to having a basic operating system and Tetris. And I think that book is a lot more effective at, le at learning the stuff that Chapter 5 of uh, SICP is trying to teach. Because, yeah, for me, I, w I rather found Chapter 5 more confusing than helpful. Okay, so that's it for the summary. So my thoughts for the book. I mean, first of all, what you can see here is I barely took any notes. I mean, this is an 880-page textbook and... Usually I would take like pages and pages and pages of notes and here I just wrote like very little apart from yeah, copying over some of the table of contents. So for me, yeah, it was really not that much new information, although there was some interesting trivia in, inside of the footnotes and the examples that were often more interesting than the main text. And yeah, I mean, didn't really expect that much new stuff from it to begin with. I mean, I have already had a, like a computer science education that covered all of these things like um, functional programming and programming in, in general and how computers work and etc. So the question is who would I recommend to read this book? I mean if you are already interested in Scheme or Lisp then I think definitely worth checking out or if you for example no programming but you didn't get like a formal computer science education you want to learn some like a bit of theory and a bit of functional programming it might also be good for that and also if you have never heard of the concept of a meta circular evaluator in lisp i mean i would definitely recommend you check that out maybe not using this book necessarily but just like google it and look at it i think it's it's kind of cool and if you're just going to read one chapter i would definitely recommend reading chapter 4. Chapter 4 was was really kind of cool and I think if you're a programmer like if you know some programming languages 
and maybe have seen like this syntax before, I think it wouldn't be too hard to just read chapter four without reading the other chapters because it's, I mean, it's a very long book and in the end you just need to ask yourself if it like worth your time to read almost 900 pages or if you're gonna spend that time reading maybe other books rather maybe spend your time doing other things. But anyway, overall, not not a bad book but if you're not like completely new to this computer science thing i would say it's maybe not that interesting other than chapter four if you're a beginner i also wouldn't necessarily say that it's something that you should necessarily be reading because well if your goal is to get a programming job then it's not necessarily a very practical book it's only if you're like interested in learning a bit about functional programming and um, scheme or lisp yeah as i said then that might be a good read 